Good morning. Let's talk about organizing your digital photos. We have a 20th century problem that our ancestors didn't have. We have too many photos, ease of storage, and no processing costs that would force us to limit our collections. Therefore, we need some way to organize thousands of photos and slides. We are going to briefly look at three popular digital photo edit and organization programs. Any one of these programs will do the trick. It is a matter of personal preference. I want to talk about the most popular consumer purchase photo organizing software, Adobe Photoshop Elements. Photoshop Elements 12 costs about $75 new, $75 new on Amazon. Elder Dunn is still using Elements 9, which has all the needed features. This software can also be used on a PC or a Mac. Before Elder Dunn chose Photoshop Elements, he tried several others. The deciding factor for him was it allowed unlimited caption length, which comes in handy when labeling group photos. Elder Dunn has not gone back to see if Elements 12 has changed this on current versions. Photoshop Elements has two basic modes, the Photo Organizer and the Edit Mode. The Edit Mode is a stripped down version of Photoshop. Photoshop does not have a Photo Organizer with it. You will need to determine how you want to organize your photos before setting up your photos in Elements. In Elder Dunn's case, all of his genealogy pictures are in a directory called Old Pictures. Within this directory, he has a folder for each year or groups of years based on how many photos he expects to have in the folder. You will note here that he did a yearly folder from 1940 on. Before that, he has them in 10-year groups and all pre-1900 photos in one file. He files headstone photos by the year of death. The folder pictured is for 1947. All photos that Elder Dunn does not have captions for are divided into years and tagged by name, place, or events. He puts these photos in a year folder one year ahead of the current year. Here you are looking at Elder Dunn's 2014 folder. You will note that the people tags are on the bottom right. Below that are place and event tags. The subtags are pulled over onto the photo where appropriate. You will need to establish the subtag for each or the major people, place, and events in your photo collection. Facial recognition software operates at all times asking who is in the picture. If the program doesn't positively recognize the person, you will be asked to provide identification for the person in question. It is pretty good. It picked out Elder Dunn's adult daughter as the same person as her one-year-old picture. In this photo, it is asking me to confirm an identification based on another picture of Virginia Ray Scott as an adult. This photo is, ask, is also asking for confirmation of his facial recognition. You will note the symbol on the bottom right of the photo, which indicates that it has been tagged by something. On the far right, the selection shows it to be James Frederick Scott. You can choose a tag and see all the pictures of a person in all the collection or any particular year. Photoshop Elements has many editing routines from Photoshop available. You pick the photo you want to work on in the organizer and then open Fix, which starts the editing process. You can see here the same basic function that we trained you on in our Photoshop training, Levels, Color, and Balance. It also has a Smart Fix function if you want to fix it automatically. You can change your organizer view from Thumbnails to Full Size with the slider at the top. 
Elder Dunn has found Adobe Photoshop Organizer to be an effective and dependable photo organizer. You also need to know that Photoshop Elements has been the sport poor stepchild of Adobe Photoshop, receiving cast off pieces of programming from Photoshop. They do a development in Photoshop and then they move nice scraps from Photoshop to Photoshop Elements that are well worth the money. Another popular organization program is Picasa. It belongs to the Google family of programs. It is popular because it does basic photo edits, it's free and easy. To find this program, just Google Picasa, or you can go to picasa.google.com to find the program. Either way, this is where you will land. Click on the button that says Download Picasa. When Picasa is downloaded and ready to start organizing your photos, you will see this page. Click on the radio button of your choice and then continue. You now have some choices to make. I choose to use the Picasa Photo Viewer as my default viewer and I leave all of the different photo formats checked. You can always change your settings later if you don't like something. When you are finished, click continue. When photos are found, they will appear in a column of photos listed to the left of the photos. There will be a number after each folder or album that tells you how many pictures are found in that, photo or in that folder or album. Remember that a folder is an actual location on your computer. If you delete a folder, it is gone forever, and so are the pictures. An album is a way to group pictures together. Therefore, you could create an album of a birthday party or a family group or something like that. If you decide later that you don't want the album anymore, you can just delete the album, but your pictures will still be intact because they were not physically moved out of their folders on your computer. Just remember, deleting a folder is permanent and deleting an album is not permanent. As you can see, I have clicked on my folder labeled Venice, Italy, and I find that I have 29 pictures in that folder. Also notice that other folders are separated by date, order, or by alphabetical if the folders have a name. When you click on a photo, this is what it looks like. On the top left, there is a series of edits that you can perform. You have the option to crop, straighten, clean up red eye, change contrast, do some retouch, add fill light, and add text. On the bottom left, there is a box with histogram and camera information. In the middle, you can give your photo a caption, and there are other choices on the very bottom to share, email, print, or export your photo. For a free program, Picasa has some nice features. Here's a nice photo that seems to be a little crooked. I'm sure that it is one that I took because I'm always a little crooked. Let's fix it. On this photo, I chose to straighten the house out a little bit. I clicked on straighten, or I clicked on edit, then straighten, moved the slider on the bottom of the screen until the house lined up with the straight grids, and then clicked on apply. Worked like a charm. There are so many things that I could show you, but my time limit is up. So for more information and visual helps, go to youtube.com and search for Picasa tutorials. There are many of them. iPhoto is the last program that we will look at. iPhoto is my program of choice because I have a Mac. I know that there are many, aren't many missionaries with Macs, but this will give you a look at another program. This tutorial is using iPhoto 2009, but there is an upgrade, iPhoto 11. I just haven't bothered with it yet. iPhoto organizes by events, photos, faces, and places. I choose most of the time to look at my photos in, that are organized by events. This particular event is my visit to Gimmelwald and Muir in Switzerland. As you can see, I have both photos and movie clips in the same file. On the left, under Library, you can see folders as well as albums. Under the Library bar is information about the folder, 
And if you click on the little blue eye, you can even get more information about the photos. The bottom bar gives many options as well. You can turn your photos into a slideshow, a book, a calendar, or a card. You can share them on Facebook, Flickr, or by email. The edit button is in this bar too. In iPhoto, you can use keywords similar to tagging in other programs. In the above photo, I have tagged the photo with the keywords Venice, Vacation, Grand Canal. Using the keywords, I can then sort by keywords to bring pictures up with those specific keywords. iPhoto also has the ability to rate the photos with stars. This one wouldn't be rated very high because it's very pixelated, just because I had to make it big so you could see. There are many other functions too numerous to mention in this training. In iPhoto, I can also mark my photos on a map. If they are marked this way, I can then sort by places and see where photos have been taken. Descriptions can also be added. This happens to be a photo of the baptistry of my husband's ancestors in a church in Winnegan, Germany. As you can see, Winnegan is right along the Mosul River. You also have the ability to toggle between a map view and a satellite view. Pretty handy. Let's click on a photo to edit. This green cow was a marketing tool for this small store. Don't you like your cows on skis? Anyway, the editing tools are at the bottom of the page. Click on the edit you want to perform, and when you are done, click Done in the right-hand corner. Notice how you can go through your photos simply by clicking on the top bar. You can then move through them one by one. Just for fun, if the green was a little rough on your eyes, you could simply make it black and white with a simple edit. Unfortunately, it does take away the whole reason why I took this picture in the first place. I'll probably never see another green cow on skis. This tutorial gave only the very basic of basics. Head over to youtube.com for lots more information. Happy organizing!